Hi everyone, this is Easter from Easter's Orchids and this is my second path deflasking for today. I probably wasn't going to film this one but then I have discovered that my flask has quite a gnarly little problem in there. So I thought I'd been watching these since they arrived but there is definitely something that shouldn't be growing in there. And it's that white fuzzy weird stuff. So this one I'm going to do a little bit differently. Um, not a lot differently but just a bit. So I have some fungicide that is a New Zealand one. It's called Fozcheck. Um, it also has sort of some um, NKP fertilizer ability with it. It has an N of 0, a P of 11 and a K of 16 so along with um, doing a fungus treatment it's going to um, fertilize my little seedling so I've given it a good shake. I have approximately um, a litre of tepid water here so I'm going to mix in five mils of this it's around about three mils per pipette so I'm just doing a little less on that pipette that makes it about five mils and I am going to give that a good stir around so I have not been able to find my hammer recently so for my flask I smack it with something that I probably shouldn't but it works to a degree so we're going to take the cork off today I have not taken the cork off or the ear in early I find with the paths that they come out pretty much okay so now I'm going to stick it into this glass container that I used last time tip it on its side and grab my thing I use instead of a hammer now don't laugh because the only heavy thing I can find in my house that's actually going to break the glass <laughs> is from my coffee machine but it's metal it's heavy and that's about as good as I can get so I'm going to stick my camera down and hopefully we can see this working so the idea of the plastic container is to send less glass anywhere should it shatter in the wrong way and it quite often does That went all over my kitchen. This time I'm wearing shoes, so at least it shouldn't get in my toe like it did last time. So this is how my broken flask looks. I was definitely a little heavy handed with that one. And what I like to try and do is get that glob of um, agar out kind of in one part and into my tepid bath so there's its roots whoops it's already falling apart and some of those don't look so wonderful so that's all junk ooh and this is what I have to work with so now I'm going to have to get the agar off there and I don't mind that I'm actually going to give those like a 10 minute soak in that um, fungal solution before I start putting it onto my tea towel and finding out about what kind of roots I have on there what I have already organized this time is I have started um, filling my little containers that the seedlings are going to go in and in case you haven't watched my first video the reason I am putting sphagnum moss down the bottom is because that has quite an open grid and I'm using very fine um, wood chips so the sphagnum moss is just going to help hold the wood chips in so I pre-organized those this time I have pre-organized my bark and perlite mix now I thought I was using half and half by the time I'd added more in on my first video where I did pathiopedalums today the Philippinensi ones um, 
I actually would think that I more like had one third of the uh, perlite and two thirds of the bark chips with the New Zealand sphagnum moss little bits on the bottom. So I've got that pre-organised. I'm now going to try getting the agar out, which I need two hands for. So I'll come back when I've got the little seedling separated. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. So I've just brought two pieces of the agar out of the water just in the attempt to try and show you what is actually growing on the top of the agar. And it's actually pretty yuck. So these ones will definitely be a bit of trial and error. And once they're established into their pots in a day or two, I will definitely be giving them another fungicide treatment. So I have given these their fungicide bath. I've taken them out. I've taken off any roots that are already rotten. I have taken away any leaves that have gone brown. And having a look at what I have here in front of me, um, this is not a very good or a very big um, lot of seedlings. So there's those there on the bench and then there's still a few of the very, very tiny little ones here on the tea towel. So there are some very interesting things with this um, flask of plants though. Obviously it did not like the agar, or they did not like the agar, because the agar was um, going mouldy. So these plants have got really quite clever, and because they were in really good humidity in the flask, they have gone tall. Lots of them have rooted well up the stem. So various places there of the the seedling stem they've sent out roots by the leaves so obviously there are root nodes by the leaves and some of them are even so clever oh, now that I've moved it I can't see the one I wanted this one here so I'm going to clear some space on the bench and we're going to have a look at it here so this one here the black tips were where the agar was pretty yuck if you turn it around, that there is another little plantlet growing, or a fan, growing from the side. And if we turn that round even further, I do believe that there is another little one growing there. So there's a bit at the bottom there that's growing, another fan, and there's a part there that's growing another fan, plus roots after it. So they were adapting to their environment, which was not very good, and trying to stay pretty strong. So there's an example. Now I wondered if it was the plantlet at the bottom was like this one, and maybe the tiny bit here at the bottom was actually another seed or seedling that was growing right beside the growing stem of that particular one that has roots three or four leaf nodes up or whether it was like this one where it has actually grown a root didn't like the agar grown another little fan there from the side and was still trying to grow more of the plant a little bit unsuccessfully because um of a bad environment so because they are so tiny I've decided that and this one here doesn't even seem to have a base root but hopefully as I say a root will come out of one of those leaf nodes I'm going to individually pot maybe the top five and in the rest I've decided to do them in two community pots so I will do a slightly larger size community pot of the plants 
and then I will probably do a second little community pot of the smaller size ones of the same plant. But these are just going to take so long to grow. <laughs> uh, if I don't put them into some sort of media and get them going, they're never going to grow. So we are starting off with two community pots. And if you haven't watched my other video, I've got probably number five, Chunky Pine Park, in the bottom. Now there I've done more than a third. I've probably done two thirds up the pot. And that's nice and airy. And that's just going to leave really good drainage. And I've done the same on the other pot. Really good chunky bark. Probably at least two thirds up the way of the pot. And then we're going to do the very, very fine pine and perlite. And then maybe on top, if I have enough left, we're just going to sprinkle some of the normal bark. So I am going to grab the spoon, fill up some of this little pot here. Once I get that chunky bark covered, none of these have long root systems, so I'm at this stage not going to have to worry about um, burying them too deep because there's such a minimal system on each plant to actually cover up. The community pot. I usually find it easier to put the bigger plants around the outside of the edge. Their roots a little bit in from the sides because I'm going to tip bark and perlite down the sides when I put it in. See this one has roots coming up right to the top tip of the plant. Sorry with the uh, lighting there is not good. It was much better during the daytime here when there were no lights on and there was sunshine coming in my room. That one there has longer roots and a root sticking out right at the top there. Not very convenient of it, but any root must be a good root if it keeps the plant growing. So now some are going to kind of lean in the middle. And I'm just lightly going to put those uh, the bark and perlite round with a spoon again shortly. So I have one, two, three more little plants. Let's try and keep them upright. So I'm just going to sprinkle in some of this mix. I start in the middle first and sort of tap it over the edges of the roots. And then I do the layer around the outside. And then I'm going to get my spoon and I'm going to pull these in and I'm going to pop it down the edges there. So I'll pull that one back, pop some down the edges and just make sure that every single root that I can get covered is going to be. I think that these are still going to end up with some roots facing upwards but that's just way they've been growing in the flask. To leave room for a little bit of just plain bark because so I don't like the perlite on the top and again if you didn't like watch my first video sorry the reason I don't like the perlite on the top is that if it's in the light either the artificial light or the sun it goes green and I hate green perlite showing so 
So that is how my first little compote looks. And we have a bit of plain bark here, so we're going to sprinkle some on top. Just going to use my fingers so that I can sort of spread it around as gently as possible. Maybe even bury that little root to keep it moist. Path roots do not like to try growing in the air. The reason they've done so in the flask is because of the massive humidity or the 100% humidity in the flask. Now that they're out in the air, they're not going to have that humidity. And those poor little roots that are sticking out there and aren't covered by any bark are not going to be happy little roots. If they get dry, they're not going to grow. This is about the best I can do with the bark chips that I have. We're just going to sprinkle the last few over. Now there is still definitely some uh, little roots sticking up here. I tried to cover those. I do suppose the other thing I could do is get some sphagnum moss and just put some sphagnum moss there and keep that nice and moist. So here we are with the finished product of my Dalinati flask that had the bad fungus problem. So we have one community pot here and I've just stuck some moss around the edges there of bits where there are roots sticking up. I may be able to keep that moist. Don't know, but <laughs> that's my biggest community pot. My littlest community pot basically has some very little green tips sticking out. I think some of those tiny ones that were almost protocorms there are almost not sticking out. But we'll see how they grow. And we have actually six that were the bigger plants, but one of them had no roots. So this one here has two in the one pot the rootless one and the normal one so there's only four there and one extra there so the five bigger plants are separate and two community pots and I have made sure that I labelled them usually on the backs of my labels I write my DF or deflasking date so that I remember when I deflask them So that's a very, very tiny flask of paths. Dalinati with many, many years, if they keep growing, to go before I ever get any blooms from these babies. Righty, thank you everybody. I hope you found this video informational and handy. Have a great day and don't forget to subscribe or like if you like the contents of my videos. Thanks very much. Bye. So just for a wee bonus at the end of my video, here's the one adult path I have out in bloom. And it's a cutie. It's a really big pouch at the bottom. And it pretty much shows the colour that it is. Yep, that's actually really good colour representation of the actual flower itself. Here's its fan. And this here is its name. It has a real multitude of names. Oh, and it's really hard to get the camera to pick that up with the light. So we have Elma Gervert times Enchanted Mystique in one plant, times Hesingi Maru times Luna Moth in another plant. It's also crossed with Ruby Voodoo. Well, I don't really see much Ruby in that. But she's still cute and beautiful. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye.